19, led by A.J. McCarron on top of the Crimson by three. The winner gets steak and potatoes. The losers get the hot dogs and baked beans. Either way, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> Welcome back. We're at our uh, halftime position here as uh, teams are back in our locker rooms. Joined by Rogers Redding. That's Todd Blackledge. And a couple of issues as we approach, uh, maybe give some the fans something to think about in the offseason. Yeah. Some, some, I don't want to say new rules, but some additional things have been tacked on to some rules. And one of those is targeting, something that we've been talking about the last couple of years. Right. Explain to us. Let's begin with that and explain to us what's uh, going on in that department. Yeah, the targeting foul, that is the targeting with the crown of the helmet or targeting to the head neck area of a defenseless player. The foul's been in place for a number of years now, but what's changed this time is the punishment. The penalty now will include automatic ejection from the game. And if it happens in the second half of the game, it's that game plus the first half of the following game. So the, the foul is the same. The penalty's been stiffened. We've got some video you want to look at here. Um, the, the block right there at about the 37-yard line, that's a blindside block. There's nothing wrong with the blindside block, but what he can't do is target and hit the guy high. And so he comes in, and uh, he's got it drawn there. You'll see the you'll see the guy come in and just launch and go right at his head, and that's what's the foul now. And that will be an automatic ejection this year. Wow. In, in terms of of that, what's been the, the feedback from the coaches knowing that a possible ejection? is the result of a play like that. You know, it's interesting, Dave. Uh, the blowback on this has been very slight because the coaches know that we got to get this play out of the game. And so what we're looking here is to change the behavior of the players as they, as they play the game. So the, the pushback on this has been very slight. I think part of it is they're comfortable with the fact that the officials, we've been having this foul in place now for a number of years, so we're more and more comfortable with calling it. And so the, but, but the fact that the penalty has been stiffened, what we want to do is change the behavior of the players. That, and that's the whole that's the whole concept. And, and, and there is, I, I noticed on the thing that you sent me earlier in the week, there is a little bit of a, of a leeway there that with the use of instant replay, right. if, if it goes back on the replay and it yeah. doesn't appear that they did target the head or neck or they right. didn't use the crown of the helmet, right. that ejection can be the ejection can be can be reversed. So what what they'll look at is was the was the was the contact actually to the head and neck area because right. it happens very fast. Right. But and so if it isn't, then the then if it's clear that it is, has to be the same absolute indisputable video evidence that it wasn't, then the ejection will be reversed. The 15 yard penalty is going to study. Okay. Because what we're trying to do is to keep from even going high yeah, in the first place. Yeah, you can't no, tackle well. Here, obviously, I mean, these are, these oh, are objectionable offenses. I play defense. I we never did a thing like that. So these are plays from last year. There's one from the... It's like Warford said, Star Trek Next Generation. You know, attack you to week. There is no honor in that. This year, the penalty now includes an automatic ejection. It, it'll be interesting the first time oh, that yeah, that happens. The first oh, yeah. ejection that takes place. It's going to be really interesting. It is, but, uh, you know, the rules committee was very clear about saying, look, we have... You know, it's all a bunch of five foot eight guys, five foot ten guys doing that. Uh -huh. on these kind of I'm not saying so nothing. I'm saying they're all short dudes. And all that. So the hope is that the player behavior will be changed, but the officials are going to call this, and so if the player needs to, needs to know if he goes high, he runs a risk of getting thrown out yeah. the ball. Game. One last thing before we let you go. Blocking below the wet waist, what can we expect to see in the fall? Yeah, that's a lot simpler now. That, that rule's been, we've messed around with that rule the last several years. And now the, the rule is that if a player is, except right after the snap, inside the, what's called the blocking zone, um, any time after that, the rules are the same for everybody. And, the, and a player cannot block below the waist sort of between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. If he does that from the front, that's okay. If he gets outside of that, it's a foul. It's always been clipping from behind. But, but now it's evaluated on just on the block itself. It's always been the case you can't block below the waist after an interception return or, or during a kick down. So the rule hasn't changed all that much except to say that, that it's much simpler now because the players will know if I if I block below the waist, I better be in that 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock right. region in front of the player. So that, the idea is he can kind of see that block coming and it's easier to defend himself. Well, right. thanks, Roger. Thanks for joining us. Uh, obviously, some changes have already been made. You don't see the high stepping into the end zone right. anymore. Those guys have kind of adapted to that. We'll see if they adapt to the targeting, knowing that an ejection will be a part. There's the trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, making it another trip to Tuscaloosa. We'll have more. Stay with us.